Home. Chapter 50. A Miraculous Ladybug Fanfiction written and narrated by Mira Rose. Artwork by XAA. You can find a link to her Tumblr in the description box below. If you haven't already, you can find the other 49 chapters of this story in the description box. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell to stay up to date on the latest parts of your favorite fan fictions, as well as gently tapping that like button and leaving a comment in support of the YouTube algorithm. If you don't know what to comment, put Rena Rouge's observation. Now then, please enjoy Home, Chapter 50. Alia Césaire as Rena Rouge Rena Rouge eyed her partners with a keen eye. They were dating. They had to be. The tension between them cooled off over the last year, but these past three weeks had rekindled something. She just wasn't sure what. Even though they should be celebrating, Ladybug kept shooting worried glances at Cat Noir, who, although he definitely started flirting with her again, was somewhat distant and cracking jokes at Gabriel Agrest's expense. Was it because he was the father of a friend? Because that friend suffered at the hands of him, both in home and as a target of Akuma victims? Rena couldn't figure it out. At times, it seemed like they were dating, but she'd imagined Kat to be all over her if that was the case. Something was off, right down to the way they were treating Gabriel. They were too careful with him. And had anyone contacted Adrian about this yet? It would hurt, but he deserved to know. When she brought up that they shouldn't be using Adrian's flat to keep a supervillain, Kat shrugged and said, don't worry about it. And Rena hadn't had it in her to protest, especially while getting a private lesson from Natalie about online marketing. Arg. What was it? What was she missing? She hadn't been able to overhear much through the bathroom door, especially because Carapace fought her from eavesdropping. The question was so frustrating that she found herself unable to concentrate in the temple, the holy grail of miraculous information that could answer questions she'd had for years. Arg, what was it? What was she missing? Left alone in the courtyard garden, Rena Rouge crossed her arms and thought, and thought, and thought, and thought. Perhaps it was the inability to figure it out, or the overwhelming curiosity that she couldn't wrestle back, but Rena Rouge stood, knowing she was about to betray Ladybug's trust. Ever so carefully, and ever so quietly, Rena padded to the room she'd seen them enter and cracked the door, peeking in ever so suspiciously. Nothing could have prepared her for what she saw inside. Cat Noir was on his knees, pressed into Ladybug, sobbing like a child. The scene upset her so terribly it took her a moment to realize no one else was in the hardwood floored room. It was just them. It was just Cat Noir crying into Ladybug's arms like a disheveled boy, bent over with whatever sorrows he was wrestling with like they were demons. This was not for her eyes. This was not something she should see. But something about what she bore witness to stirred emotions inside her, and not proper ones. She closed the door as his sobs echoed, not worried that someone might hear it. The way Ladybug rubbed his back and his tight clutch on hers. There was so much more than a sidekick like her would ever know. An hour passed, and then an hour more, but Rena didn't dare look inside the room again. She instead made herself useful, finding monks and telling them about Natalie. 
An hour later, she found herself in a sitting room with Carapace, Viperion, and Queen Bee, but Ladybug and Cat Noir were nowhere to be seen. She couldn't blame them. Whatever happened, it wasn't good. Looking like her soul decided to leave her body, Ladybug staggered in. Okay, she said, her voice hoarse. Let's go. Ugh, finally! Queen Bee exclaimed. Did Gabe ever pee? Carapace piped up. Uh, yes. They took him to use the facilities, Ladybug said. Viperion put a hand on Ladybug's shoulder, a look of concern on his face. Where's Cat Noir? He asked, his voice gentle enough for Rena to realize he noticed her pink eyes. He's, uh... Ladybug took a moment to compose herself. He's not coming. Rena could tell she was barely keeping it together. Okay, she said, clapping her hands. Sounds good, folks. Let's go. Ladybug gave her a slight nod and, thanks to the power of the miraculous, went back to Adrian's apartment. Queen Bee and Carapace left right away, but Rena and Viperion hung back with Ladybug. Rena had her own reasons, but she was sure Viperians weren't as selfish as her curiosity-stemmed ones were. Is Cat all right? Viperion asked, his voice forever gentle. Yes. Ladybug blinked back a new wave of tears. It's better if he doesn't come back, for now. Rena bit back question after question. Her reporter instincts were roaring for the scoop, but she knew better. She needed to be a comforter, not an antagonizer. And, well, only Ladybug was here, so that's the only one she could help. Sweeping Ladybug into a hug, Rena Rouge sent a silent prayer to whomever was listening. Please, please let Cat Noir find the comfort he needs, too. Thank you so much for listening. Chapter 51 is on the way. If you'd like more Miraculous Ladybug fanfiction, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and support the YouTube algorithm by hitting the bell, gently tapping the like button, and leaving a comment in the comment section. If you don't know what to comment, put... Cat Noir's Comfort. I will catch you in the next one. Bye!